James Bond is nothing without his gadgets. Well, he's still an incredibly well-dressed psychopath, judoing his way across the globe, but judo only gets you so far. Because sometimes you need an incredibly specific and impossible gadget in order to get you out of a jam. Like a jacket that doubles as an avalanche airbag, or a grenade pen, or a gun. Get some proper bloody gadgets, Craig, for God's sake. Anyways, here's what I consider to be the dumbest Bond gadgets. But I don't know, so much of these movies don't make sense anyways, what does it matter? <sighs> Bond. First up, we have the Hovercraft Gondola from Moonraker. Now at first pass, a gondola with an engine is a pretty solid idea. Even though he could have just had a speedboat. They do have those in Venice. I know, I've been there. I'm a man of the world. The moment though, when it gets really ridiculous, is when it travels on land. I mean, look how slow this is. Just get out and run, you dickhead! Not only is it not very fast, it's incredibly conspicuous. So much so that it makes a pigeon double take. The one advantage it has, I guess, is that as it's painfully grinding its way onto solid ground, the villains are so shocked that they forget to shoot at him. Presumably because they're all, is this, is this guy serious? <laughs> Diamonds Are Forever introduced audiences to a couple of things. The concept of diamonds being forever, and some kind of rat trap style pocket defense mechanism. Now this does what it's supposed to do, I guess. Some nameless goon reaches into your pocket, and instead of grabbing that gun, he gets a fistful of broken and bloody fingers. I have questions about this though. Now that's generally the side of the jacket where he keeps his gun. Does that mean he has two pockets? Or two holsters? One fake and one real? Also, is this trap in all of his jackets? Also, where's his actual gun? He never gets it out. When gearing up that morning, was he like, you know what? Probably don't need a gun. I'm just gonna go pocket trap and just see what happens. It is amazing that he has never been killed multiple times. <laughs> Octopussy is a movie with not one, but two animal related disguises. And they're both ridiculous. We got the horse float, which lo and behold is actually housing an aeroplane. Great. Though we could have just used a regular trailer. Because what happens then if someone does come across it? They'd be all, oh you've got a small plane. There's nothing illegal about that. In fact, it'd be much weirder if you just had a fake horse's ass in here. But you don't, so you know, no further questions. But we also get the crocodile slash submarine. First of all, for something that's supposed to look like a real crocodile, this looks a hell of a lot like a plastic crocodile. Secondly, what's wrong with scuba gear? He's done that before and it's way more covert. And I know this example only works if you ignore the bird that's on his head, but you can barely see it. I don't even know why I pointed it out. No one's gonna notice this. And if I was a henchman and I saw this, I'd be like, holy shit, there's a crocodile like right there. Wait a minute, that's clearly not a real crocodile. What's going on? Am I being punked? And what's being punked? It's the 80s still. <laughs> James Bond's Asian disguise in You Only Live Twice. Oh boy. This is... What the hell are they thinking here? Okay, so Bond has to go deep undercover in a Japanese village. So in order to do so, they have to make him look Japanese, instead of just keeping him in a shed that no one's allowed to go near. So through the use of body hair dye, a wig on top of the wig that Sean Connery was already wearing, and prosthetics, the most famous secret agent in the world is transformed into some kind of squinting Scottish giant in a kimono. Now this is a stretch for any audience to believe that a person would fall for this disguise. But the thing is, it doesn't even work in the movie. People are still trying to murder him. Unless they're trying to do that because they find this get up massively offensive. Thanks everyone. Now if you liked this, I've got a couple of other videos that may interest you that I'll link at the end of this video and below along with my podcast, The Weekly Planet. This Monday, we're talking the Daniel Craig era Bond films and how they stack up not only against the others, but against action spy movies in general. I'd love to know though, what's your favorite and least favorite Bond gadget? And you are welcome to say the radioactive tracking lint that appears in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Because that seems... So dangerous. But I guess it was the 60s, man. That was a time when you could prescribe cigarettes and whiskey to a baby. Regardless, if you do have any thoughts, please feel free to leave them below. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.